All right. Welcome, everybody. From popular demand, I've brought Elon, formerly from Awaken Aesthetic, back to the channel. And today, we're going to talk about something that we both noticed about as YouTubers. Why the hell is it that whenever we make content about anabolic steroids and performance-enhancing drugs, the viewers just eat that shit up? Why? <laughs> That's what they're like waiting for. It's almost like cheat codes. I remember we discussed this back in the day. For getting like YouTube views and stuff, it is cheat codes to talk about anabolic steroids and performance enhancing drugs on YouTube. Yeah, well, I think that the reason why that is is because the content is so heavily censored and it's hard to actually get a hold of the real hardcore content on YouTube. So mm -hmm. like when you talk about it, it's like it's like a super hack because it, it gets so many views because everybody wants to hear about it. But then at the same time, you risk getting censored and shut down. So it's okay. a double sword, definitely, to, to talk about that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's definitely what happened uh, to me and Tony Huge, definitely. Uh, but I feel like there's something more to it, though, than, than just the fact that it's hard to come by information. Because... Let me, I'll just give you guys like a little insight into some of the messages that I receive. Um, I'll have messages coming from guys who are just normal looking guys. You know, they don't look like they're, they're using uh, performance enhancing drugs at all. Um, but they'll have really complex questions that they're answering, asking me about different, um, you know, obscure drugs, obscure peptides, um, how to use different types of IGF-1 and like timing on all their injections and all this like crazy, crazy stuff um, uh, that is like theoretical, basically. It, it's like mm -hmm. they get some kind of a, a pleasure from from thinking about it. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. I think there's, uh, you know, there's two kinds of people. There's people who, who think about it and there's people who be about it, you know. And okay. uh, if you're the type of guy to just to just get your hands on something and start doing it, you're probably not the sort of guy who like, you know, watches endless hours of YouTube videos and especially reaching out to people with all these detailed questions and stuff like that. I mean, I think that there is a place for things like that, but I think a lot of people like to mentally masturbate instead okay. of actually going in and doing it themselves and getting the experience. Yeah, that's that's the impression that I get from some of it, too. Actually, you know, so, since I, I mentioned uh, Tony Huge a second ago, I will he gets, you know, an astronomical amount of uh, PED questions as well. And he, he's shown me them on his phone, you know, when he's been looking through answering them. And it's the exact same thing. It's it's these obscure questions from these people who, you know, you'd look at them and you'd think, oh, that person has no business uh you know want you know wanting to learn all in depth about this and stuff you know because you know all they need to do right now the best option for them is a uh, a little testosterone cycle <laughs> but they're they've got all these in-depth questions about the most uh, detailed aspects of ped use i think that there's a lot of facets to this to this conversation actually why this is like we were talking the other day about dan duchene and uh you know, he was the guy who, you know, popularized doing steroids and, and a major manufacturer and all this stuff. And he was exactly that type of guy, you know, like a skinny guy. Yeah, who yeah. Looked, he had no business with steroids, but he was so curious about everything that had to do with it. So I think That's that exactly our, our, right. I think our community has like a strong backbone of these like sort of people that like help prop it up, you know, and 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 are interested in this sort of stuff. Yeah, you know, that's actually a good point too, because, and then you take guys uh, like like me, for example, who is nowhere near the size of an IFBB pro, but I have experience. And, and, and I also have uh, like a good understanding of what everything does and the different, I have, I have experience with the chemicals and understanding of, you know, what they do and why. But a lot of the, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just because, you know, the biggest guys don't want to talk about it or it's because they don't have an understanding of it. They're just using it. But those, I would say that the general public 
their ideal situation would be to have the biggest bodybuilders in the world being the guys who are teaching about them. That seems to be what the public wants. I think that is what they want, but I, I'm i not sure if that's necessarily what would actually be best for people uh, because – a, the top bodybuilders, obviously they use drugs like really irresponsibly and they have almost no regard for their health because they're going for uh, top titles and stuff like that. So their perspective might be skewed a lot in the sense that they think that like a moderate cycle is something that for most people would actually might be too much. Like when you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, do you think that they... Because there's a definite lack of guys like that who do supply valuable information that you would almost think that they would have. Do you think it's because they just don't know? Like they're taking orders from their coaches and and so they're basically, they don't know, you know, why it is that what they're doing is working. They're just taking orders. Or uh, do you think it's some kind of like psychological reason? Like they don't want to associate themselves with that or some kind of paranoia? What What do you think? I think it. I think it's a mix of all those different factors. I. I also think that it, it depends on the individual. Like Phil Heath, he seems like a smart guy. Uh, you know, Phil Heath, Kai Green, they seem smart, like smart guys. There's some guys up there, you know, that you hear about, like Rami or like Roly, who probably uh, like they don't even speak English and maybe don't have access to the same information that even somebody who might be able to read in English might have access to. And they kind of just take orders from the people around them. It's a different culture over there. But I think that generally there's still a stigma in bodybuilding of talking about this sort of thing, which I think is ridiculous because, like, yeah. obviously you're juice to the gills. But I think a lot of people, they don't want to be associated with anything illegal because they're paranoid about law enforcement. And if I think if the entire bodybuilding industry was open about what they actually do – the entire thing might just get shut down by the government. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're right about that. Because because it's like, I mean, you know, guys like you, me, Tony, all get censored, you know, on social media. You know, we're like almost like pioneers of putting this information out for the general public to see and then immediately get censored, you know. One thing I've noticed is that IFBB pros or just pro bodybuilders or biggest bodybuilders in general have enormous egos, enormous egos, like, like personality disorder type egos. Like it's not normal. They're not mentally OK for the <laughs> most part. For the most part, there's some who are, but it, it seems to be like almost an advantage if you have some sorts of mental struggles mm. uh, that you're like like an obsessive compulsive personality disorder it seems like those types of people are drawn to bodybuilding and have more success in it than a person who otherwise wouldn't i don't know if it's because of the attention to detail that it requires and things like that but along with that massive ego that goes along with that when you start talking about performance enhancing drugs people are automatically going to attribute your hard work and your results and achievements to those things and that that may be with those extra big guys where it's more obvious I, i've been thinking that that may be a, a big factor there i think that professional bodybuilders they have huge egos yes they're scared to talk about these things yes also they the supplement companies manipulate people into thinking that okay you buy this protein powder yes that's also definitely a consideration there's financial incentives for them not to talk about this sort of stuff and there really is no incentive for them to come out and talk about it other than perhaps building a business around educating people but i think there's more money to be made deceiving people than actually giving them real education um so there's really no incentive for them to come out and, and educate people like like you guys are doing okay so what do you think about uh like pro sports because it's very obvious from all the busts that happen that like pro sports are completely saturated with performance enhancing drugs. You know, it's like some people get exposed for political reasons every once in a while, you know, like you get Lance Armstrong uh, 
et cetera, or some fighters in the, in the, the UFC. But then, you know, you have athletics, uh, Olympic athletes being busted, you know, from, you know, new techniques to retest samples from like 20 years ago. And the people who tested clean were, you know, now dirty. And, um, you know, the NFL, especially like the linemen and everything, like they're all using it. Like you have to use it or you can't compete. And then you get stuff like, you know, the NBA, you know, you got these dudes with these, you know, they're seven feet tall, but they have these massive shoulders, you know, <laughs> that are totally blown out in 3D. And it's like, yo, dude, that's just not possible. You know, it's, it's very it's very blatant. Uh, to the train guy that these people are using uh, performance enhancers. I think that it actually is going down a lot. I think there's a lot of people in sports that are using still performance enhancers, yes. But I think that in a lot of ways, society is starting to really distance itself from that. If you look at the 80s and 90s, I think it was a lot more prevalent and like everybody was just juiced to the gills in all sports. But right now, if you look at the WWE, they're all pretty much natural now. Like they've gone down in size so much and a lot of different industries. I think there's still a couple sports like football you're mentioning and basketball where they're largely unregulated. Um, and the, I mean, the Olympics, no, the Olympics. Yeah. The Olympics and, and things like that. I think that, I don't think that any of those people will ever actually come out and educate the public on how they did what they did because it just, I don't know if if the public could reach a point where they could accept that this is a reality, then maybe we could actually live in a world of truth. But people are scared of the truth and they're scared of reality for the most part. I think the mainstream person doesn't want to know the truth. They'd rather live in a comfortable fairy tale where everybody, you know, just does things honestly and legitimately and doesn't try to cheat. And I think that stigma of cheating has ruined it forever and put us backwards in terms of this information for a hundred years. Yeah, that was a really good point. Uh, what you said about, what, what was it that you said a second ago before you said the cheating thing? I just think that the way that society views it, they don't want to know the truth. Yeah, and, they don't. Yeah. That's exactly right. And they can't handle it. You know, if you, if you tell people, um, you know, what what we were just mentioning about about like oh yeah NFL athletes or you know even uh, like Lance Armstrong and like biking before he got busted or the Olympics you know they'll have an emotional response like the 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 normal person will have an emotional response when they're arguing against you when you say they're using PEDs they'll be like no they're not and and they'll like be like uh, it'll be dear to their heart to to say to you no. They're not using them and, and it will seriously um, bother them deep, deep inside to have this uh, thought that, you know, maybe professional athletes are, you know, on PEDs, you know, most of them that will really deeply bother them. And they'll have to kind of like maybe after you had a, a big conversation with them about it, it might take them several hours or even days to recover and feel normal again. <laughs> Yeah, well, the truth hurts. Yeah. I think I think uh, what we were talking about earlier, too, it's like, so there's guys who look completely normal. They look like they never took anything, but they want to know every detail about everything that anyone ever took. And then on the other side of it, there's people who, who don't want to believe that anyone ever took anything. And it's ironic because the truth is that people just take small amounts, usually... Yes of pharmaceutical compounds that there is not that complicated. It's just like a little bit here, a little bit there to enhance performance. And that's it. And, and training and diet really is the basis of, of every good athlete. Absolutely. Uh, the, especially in athletics, even, yes. even way so more than bodybuilding. Yeah. But bodybuilding too. I mean, I think that training and diet are always going to be the most important thing. It's always going to be 95% of the equation. And I think that people people just don't know the truth about what performance-enhancing drugs actually do. They just, yeah. in their mind, the way that they see it in their thought bubble is just not what it is in reality. 
And if you actually have experience with them in reality, you know what they are. So it's not so scary anymore. And you know that they're simple. They're easy to use. And people use them. And it is what it is. You know, that, that is that is a really major thing that people don't know what they do. That's one of the whole things. And I think that's one of the things why people are interested, actually, in seeing people on YouTube, you know, talk about, like, saying, like, I am a user. Because <laughs> it's like, because then they can see, you know, like, oh, that's what they do, you know, and this guy, I can see his face, and that's what they do. Yeah, and, like, like you were showing me your little uh, thing from your book with uh, the growth hormone, right? And, like, you can look back at your pictures back when you were using growth hormone and see how much it changed your physique. And like really see the true effects of it right on your body. Because if you go back to the pictures from uh, Thailand, the Philippines, whatever, when you were using it, yeah. and you look at your pictures right now, you can see that exactly what you say it does is exactly what it did. And I think it's a really interesting case study where people can learn something and they can have real information from actual an actual source that they can trust. And I think another big thing is that performance enhancing drugs and steroids are just words. But people don't understand that it's hormones. It's a real hormone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And how hormones. the hormone affects the body. Like, that's they, really what it is. They think, they think a steroid is some kind of diabolical molecule. They don't, they don't realize <laughs> it's a hormone. <laughs> yeah, they just, they don't realize, they don't know anything about it. I think the reason that um, that people are so infatuated with uh, talking about steroids, and, it's, and, and if you look at what everyone is obsessed with talking about uh, in actuality, they're obsessed with talking about Trembolone, right? That's the most popular one. Yeah, 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 and, you're right. And I think that's because Trembolone actually meets the stereotypes of negative steroid use that are portrayed online pretty closely, more closely than any other testosterone or any other actual muscle building normal hormone that, you know, humans can take that have been clinically prescribed, Trenblone could actually have some very adverse effects. Yeah. And I think that's why people are interested in it because they think that steroids are going to do this and then they take Trenblone and they're like, oh, this is what they were talking about. But really, it's just a very small part of all the steroids available and all the performance-enhancing drugs that have very little to no side effects. That's a good point because because it is that is a special uh, compound, and um, I've uh, I've discussed this before that you know I had my time experimenting with that, and then I decided no more, and because uh, I I didn't like it I didn't like. Uh, having to deal with the things that it brought with it, even though it's the number one chemical to make your body look like a bodybuilder to, to uh, facilitate that. It's the number one thing you can use. Um, but it's just, uh, it, com it comes with too much baggage. Like if people, if anyone is, uh, you know, familiar with my old channel, Awakening Aesthetic, my, my whole point was that, in the old school days, I believe they had a much healthier approach to bodybuilding. They had a much more sensible approach and their bodies also looked better, even though they didn't really understand what they were taking as much as, as we might do now scientifically. I think that they had a better instinctual understanding of what was going on and they were more in touch with their feelings and emotions and maybe less insecure because they didn't have like social media and all these different things that they had to amount to all the time, they were doing it out of true passion and love for the sport and health also being a main focus. So I yeah, think that yeah. by emulating their perspective, like, you know, you're trying to do and I was trying to do before, it, it can show people a healthy way to, to engage in the bodybuilding lifestyle, which does involve using hormones if you want to do it at that level. Uh, which, you know, you're still doing it and a lot of people are still doing it. I'm not doing it anymore, but I think that those guys also took long periods of time off. They had a very sensible approach and they only used things that they knew wouldn't hurt their health. And there's still, a lot of them are still around today. So I think people could really learn from what those guys did back in the day, as opposed to anything that came out after 1990, I think is very, can be very toxic. 
Yeah, that, I like I like that, and that makes me actually hearing you say that makes me think of Rick Drayson, and he's a YouTuber. Uh, he was one of Arnold's training partners back in the day, and he has a YouTube channel, and he's still alive and he's still making videos. Uh, but it made me think of, of the videos that he's made and the things that he said about that era. Um, and, and it did seem like, you know, when Arnold said, I take uh, steroids 10 weeks before the competition because it's the finishing touches. It's like, yeah, it, it, it's the finishing touches that you throw on top of the things that matter the most, like the, the training and the diet and then you take the supplementation and that's the finishing touches that make you be able to take it to take your training and diet and move the body to this super physiological shocking wow level and i I think this might be a little bit esoteric also but i've also heard some of these guys talk about like it's a lot in your mind you know what i mean like they didn't have pct drugs they would just come off and have a positive attitude and know that I'm a man, my testosterone level will come back. All I have to do is keep training, keep dieting and stay on it. They didn't have all this neuroticism that we have today. And when I came off, everything was fine for me because I took that positive mindset like the old school guys did. And I said, listen, I understand what I did. You know, I'm a man, I made my decision. But I'm done with this, and I'm going to heal from this. I'm going to keep as much muscle as I can, keep training hard. And because me being a bodybuilder and me being a man, it's not due to performance-enhancing drugs. It's just due to my own heart, my own grit of training, and my love for the sport, and that's all. And they understood what was important. And when you understand what's important, you get good results. But I think people nowadays are very, very neurotic, and they think that drugs make the athlete and that's the whole big problem, why everybody keeps it under wraps. But the, yeah. the guys from back in the day were so casual. If you look at Robbie Robinson, he's like, yeah, I took a little bit of DECA. I took one shot of DECA a week. I ate sensibly, and I trained hard. And like he still has a high testosterone level into his old age after 20 years of taking steroids, and he just came off. But nowadays, people are terrified to come off. I think there's a lot of issues today. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna wrap this up now, guys, because it's it's getting it's getting far. But Elon just now said it. This is the reason why people are so obsessed with um, learning about steroids, myself included. When I was a young guy, I was very interested. Eat up all that information. But the re- the reason why everybody wants to talk about it, wants to learn about it, is because they believe the drugs make the athlete. So uh, with that, guys, we're going to head out. We're going to leave you with that message. But uh, make sure that you know uh, from you know listening to us here that the main thing is the training and the diet. And then the last thing that you put on top of it to make you be able to go from that normal person level to that bodybuilder level is just some gear. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be real complicated. All it's got to be is, you know, it's got to just be a steroid cycle. That'll do it. A little bit of test and DECA. <laughs> All right, brother. Peace. Take care.